Now here, of course, the problem is whenever you type some gibberish, you click reset, there's no visual representation as to why this is not updating. So I'm typing something and clicking on the submit button, but it doesn't actually submit anything, like it doesn't change anything. And this is the next thing we're gonna fix. So let's actually go back to forms and let's go to some examples here. So the very first example you see, whenever something is invalid, you could also add a special class that's known as is danger. And that's gonna basically um, create a sort of like an outline, a red outline around the input. And this would sort of like be a visual indication to the user as to what's going on and why the input is not being accepted by the application, right? So this is the next thing we're gonna do. We're actually gonna need to access the valid property of the state, okay? And this is going to present another problem for us. For now, let's just go into it. So my idea here, for example, if we are valid, if the form is valid, uh, we want to basically add a class to the list of classes on the input. So this is an example of how to use conditional classes in React also. So I'm going to extract those classes on the input to a separate constant. Actually, it can be a constant because um, a constant cannot, well, not, you know, we can't reassign value on the constant. Uh, the value of a constant cannot change, so we need to use the let keyword. And I think in this case, I'm just gonna uh, use let instead of const for the state properties, okay? And uh, we're just gonna have this variable initialization on the same line, basically. Instead of having like two let keywords, we're just gonna have one and we're gonna declare a second variable here, let's call it classes. This would be input classes. So if the form is valid, what we want to do is we want to add a class to that classes string, and the class would be is success. Okay. Whenever you uh, add the is success class, as you can see here from this example, it's going to add a green outline to the input. So let's save that and let's say instead of a string for class name, let's actually put an object. And this is going to be the classes object. Let's save it. You see the green outline there, okay? The other thing we want to do is let's also add is danger class. And of course, this is going to be added if the form is not valid, okay? If it's valid, it's going to be green, it's success. If it's not valid, we need to is to add it is danger class. And it's going to add red outline, okay? Of course, if I type gibberish, it's going to be red. But the thing is, as you can see here, when you load the form, it's already green, okay? And it's green because the valid by default is true. Now, this is actually a problem because the empty string is not a date. It cannot be converted to an actual date. But we also need to check whether, whether the user actually edited the input, whether you actually typed something to the input. By default, it's true. The, the valid property is true. We don't want to have any outline. So we need to add another property, and we're going to call that property, let's say, dirty, okay? By default, it's false. So like I said, the dirty property basically refers to whether the user typed something to the form. By default, it's false because we didn't actually type anything, right? So it's false. Once we have that property, this is going to fix the problem with the outline. Um, you have the dirty property and it's false by default. So I want to add the class if the form is valid, but also if it's dirty. I only want to add the class if the form is actually dirty. If the form is not dirty, meaning the user did not actually input anything to the to the input box, did not actually type anything, the form is not dirty by itself. So you didn't type anything. So that's why we don't want to add the class. But if you did actually make it dirty, if you did actually type something, if you touched the input in any way, then we want to add the class. And the same condition will also be true for is danger class so i'm going to add that into it as well now next what we want to do is whenever we type something to the input we want to update the dirty property to true because you typed something so we need to update that value and once it becomes true you will actually be able to see classes on the input so if it's invalid it's going to be red and that basically indicates that there's some kind of a problem on the input so there's an error but if let's say you type something that's valid let's say um, 20th of January next year, okay? We reset, we get the green outline because the, the input, the value of the data we provided or typed is actually valid. Now, another thing that we could also do with validation is we could also provide a custom you know, error message as well. 
So in this example here, for instance, they have a paragraph that basically has a class of help and it basically provides some kind of a message. So in this case, it makes sense for an error. And uh, let's use that example also. So if I were to put that in, of course, we need to update the class name. But I think it's going to complain because we have a paragraph nested inside of another paragraph. In fact, you go back. Yep, it doesn't like it because we have a paragraph inside of a paragraph. That's an error. Let's change it to a span. In fact, let's change it to an I tag. This is basically going to uh, make the text italic for us. Okay. And this should work. This should be an error message. But of course, uh, you could make it larger if you use a helper class. For example, is size six. This is going to make it a little bit larger, more readable. And also, we could have a class of has text centered. This is going to center the text of the error message. And the error message itself, in this case, we could do something like, let's say, please type a valid and future. Don't forget that it also has to be a date in the future, not in the past. Date, okay? And this is going to be the error message. And by default, it's visible, but we do not want to show it unless the value of the date is invalid. So we could have, again, we have an expression here. This is how you would basically render a block of JSX conditionally. So of course you could use if conditions and you could move this block outside, for example. You could have, um, let's say, constant, um, let's do error. By default, it's an empty string, but if you know the form is not valid, you want to update the error and you want to set it to a block of JSX, and then you basically want to output that value inside of the form, but just below the input, right? So you might output that error as well, okay? And this is the approach that actually creates a variable outside, is inside of the render method, and error is read only, how, of course. I overlooked it, it actually needs to be a variable with a let declaration because constant cannot be declared. But uh, you do that and then you type something if it's valid, you are not going to see the error. If it's something that's invalid, gibberish, you're going to see the error. But there's also another approach for dealing with that. Instead of actually creating the variable outside, we could have the condition inside the expression and then we just have the JSX block just next to it, okay? So we don't need to create any variables outside outside the uh, return block, okay? So this block is only going to be visible on the page as long as the valid property that we got from the state is true. If this is false, like I said before, because of how comparisons work in JavaScript, it's uh, JavaScript is actually not going to look at the second part of the condition. It's just going to see, okay, because the first one is false, I don't need to look at the second one, we're not going to display anything to the uh, to the DOM. This element is not actually going to be part of the DOM. But if it's true, then we're going to display the second operand of the uh, logical comparison, right? And it's actually going to return that, and it's going to, you know, put it to the DOM. In this case, of course, I forgot the uh, negation, uh, the exclamation point, because we need to negate valid, right? We want to have Let's say if it's not valid, then you want to display the block of code in there, right? So you save that. By default, there's no error. If I type gibberish, it shows the error. But if I type an actual valid date, so even 2020 is a valid date, and I click reset, it updates the timer. Okay, and you don't see the error because it's a valid date. And this is basically validation in a nutshell. Now, to wrap up the forms, one thing I'd like to do is I would probably like to simplify this just a bit. Um, what I want to do is I want to make this form more reactive. So it'd be nice if we could actually type to a, an input and it would actually show us the updated value already you know, in the application so that we don't have to click the reset button ourselves. It's going to make the application more reactive and more you know, faster, more responsive. So for that, we're not going to deal with form submit events. So we're actually going to listen to changes on the input we're going to check if the value that was provided, if the actual date on the state is valid now. If it's valid, we're going to call the date reset method on the parent. It's going to update the state. It's going to update the timer. 
but if the value is not valid, is we're just gonna you know show an error, change the colors you know to red and show the error, but we're not gonna update the state of the parent. Okay, so in this case, I'm going to remove the form because we no longer need the form here. Like I said, we're gonna make it more reactive. Let's remove the closing tag of the form. Let's indent it, and here's what we're gonna do. So here, there's no, there's gonna be no form submit. Like I said, there's just gonna be events as to when the value of the input changes. In fact, we don't need the second paragraph anymore because we don't need the, the button any, any longer. And once that's saved, if you go back to the browser, we just have the input. Now, whenever the value of the input changes, let's also add another variables here. So I'm going to have another one is going to be, let's say valid. It's just basically going to be that condition. Now, and again, because of your short hat syntax, you don't actually need to put column valid. You can just put valid for readability. I'm just going to move it to the top. Okay. The next thing I'll do, I remove. I'll, I'm going to remove this statement, and I'll put it to handle date changed. And we're also going to need to get the date from the state. Now, in this case, this date would actually be a moment object, but we already calculated with the date in there. So I'm just going to put it like this. Date, we already have the date object. And we don't need the second handle date submit method. Now, once again, we're basically calling the moment function. Uh, we're passing the value from whatever you typed into the input box. And once we wrap it into the moment function, it's going to give us the moment instance. That's going to be a new date. We're also calculating whether the date is valid, so we're calling the isValid method. We're also checking if the date is a date in the future. So in other words, if the date is after now, okay? Then we set the state, then we update the state, and we also call onDateReset, given that the date is actually valid. So let's, now let's save it, and let's say I type gibberish. No errors in the console, we just get a warning, but you can just you know, ignore it for now. But if I type an actual date, 2020, it's going to update the state. Um, let's do 2020, let's say 0125, it's going to update the state. So you can see that it's actually even more reactive than it was before, and that's because of the refactoring that we did. So now we actually update the state on the parent when you type something down and if it's valid. So you click on resume, that's going to resume the timer, of course. And because of styling, you, you of course could keep the error message if you'd like to, but I think I'm just going to remove it for now, like so. And again, if you type gibberish, it's just going to be red. It's going to indicate that there's a problem with the input. And again, for example, if I type, let's say, the date of tomorrow, this would be 21st, and you see that the value updates, we get a new title, and the timer also updates, we get 11 hours left until that date. And for example, if we wanted to put a specific time, this is going to accept an international format for times, so this is basically 5 p.m. Of course, you don't need to put 17, you could just do 5, but then you need to be specific about the, uh, the second part, you need to put p.m. Otherwise, it's going to default to a.m., okay? So that's basically it for forms and validation. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.